Hey guys, come on in, come on in. How's everybody doing? Welcome, welcome, welcome. This is going to be a fun live stream. Thanks for joining. We're going to open up my game Father, or whatever it's called. We're still figuring out a name. It might be called Happy Hotel. We're going to open that up inside of Unity, and I want to show you how we're, we're creating this beautiful terrain for the exteriors. Um, it's pretty cool, actually. And, you know, it's not that many assets. Um, so, yeah, let's open up Unity, take a look. And by the way, guys, if you haven't downloaded my free 2D game kit below or joined my easy 3D program, it's totally free. It's a online course, totally free, no gimmicks, on how to make a 3D game really, really fast. You could probably do it in a day. Or you could check out my webinar below on how to secure six figures with just a demo. All right, let's go ahead and jump in and get started. Let's go. Wait, where's the intro? Where's the intro? Oh, there it is. By the way, guys, feel free to download my free 2D game kit below. It's totally free. It's my treat to you. I used this exact 2D game kit to make a game for PewDiePie in 14 days, and then I got to play it in front of his subscribers, which was really awesome. Um, so download that. Use it however you want. It's my treat to you. Yeah. Okay. All right, guys. So first I want to hit play. I want to hit play and just show you what we've got here. Now, full disclosure, I have a team member, his name is Felipe, and he is the 3D artist for the game. So I am the art director, right? I do the code, I do the sound design, I do the story, I do the level design, and I direct the project, okay? That doesn't mean that I don't have experience doing art, but I'm now on my third game, so I'm doing the art direction, okay? Felipe is the 3D artist. He's doing an incredible job laying out this level. So I'm going to show you how we're putting this together and also we'll jump in and start making a few edits today to make things really, really pop. Okay, so let's hit play. All right. So hopefully you guys can hear this okay. So this is inspired by Bioshock, but also Shutter Island, okay? So I just wanted to show it to you really quick, give you an idea of how it looks, because in a couple minutes, I'm gonna break down how exactly we made this and how you can too. You can make something very similar with just a few assets and some terrain, okay? So this is the only exterior level in the game. Most of them are gonna be inside, okay? So this is the only real sort of breath of fresh air you're gonna get for the whole game. Okay. So we could go over there, but I'm gonna go back here, just show you really quick. Again, I'm just giving you an idea of what we've got here, just so you can sort of feel out like, wow, this feels really detailed, it's really stylish. How exactly is that accomplished? Well, it's actually pretty simple. It doesn't mean it's not hard work to lay this out, but the assets themselves are pretty simple, okay? Okay, so by the way, we're gonna get this gate working during this live stream. All right, so there's a much bigger level to explore, but that's for, well, that's for when you give me $15 to play the game. Okay, so <laughs> let's take a look at how it looks with all the lighting turned off and all the effects turned off, okay? So if I turn off this light here and also the effects, this is what we've got, okay? Lot of stones, okay? Lot of stones. Now, let's go ahead and just select one of these stones to get an idea of what it looks like. Okay, so we have this one stone here. If I just pull it up and ruin the level, you can see it's a very simple stone here with a mesh collider on it, but it also has an LOD. I believe this one has an LOD. So who knows what an LOD is, okay? I'll let you explain in the chat and then I'll read what your explanation is if it's correct. But we have an L uh, LOD in here. 
and it swaps between the two, okay? So that ensures that we have these massive rocks all throughout the level, these modular rocks all throughout the level here, and it basically is a ton to render if we don't utilize occlusion culling. So because these are static, okay, right here, because they're static, we can use something called occlusion culling, okay? So if I bake out my occlusion culling like this, can't see it, let me move my little ugly face. We're baking the occlusion culling. All this is gonna do is it's gonna tell Unity, it's gonna create sort of this grid, okay? And this grid is being created here slowly and each little square, each little voxel, is basically a voxel that the camera viewport can hit. If the viewport hits that voxel, it's going to render the stones. If not, the stone will disappear. So that's what allows us to have tons of stones in the scene and still have a pretty good frame rate, okay? And I'll show it to you in just a second, all right? Sort of in live action when we hit play, okay? So we've got these big rocks. There's only probably two or three different rocks. And you can see here it's already baked the occlusion calling. Let me hit play and just show you. I'm going to move my game scene over here or my game window over here. And this is what happens. Do you see how the rocks are appearing? So now it's, it needs to render way less, okay? So let's make sure we turn off visualization. So I'm just going to go back to the inspector. That way it doesn't have to visualize it for us. And when we go to game view here, our frame rate is much faster. You probably can't tell a difference on your end um, due to the frame rate of the stream, but um, it is significantly faster, especially when I move the camera really fast, okay? So that's how we're getting away with all these different stones, all right? In addition, we've got these big old stones. In addition to the stones, we also have a very simple terrain. Okay, so here's our terrain. And by the way, those stones are just from an asset pack. And it was like 50 bucks, I think, for these stones. Um, you might think that's a lot of money for just some rocks, but it saves a lot of time in the long run, especially when you have all these rocks and you're using them over and 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 over again. It makes it so much better long term because you can scale them and rotate them and make them look really pretty and you can make them look so different like this looks totally different right here than let's say this section here but they're all the same stones right okay these are all placed on top of our terrain so if i go to my terrain here i'm just going to pull this terrain up again we're going to ruin the level here for just a sec this is all we've got for our terrain all right it's very simple and honestly kind of messy looking at it without the stone. Now, some of you might have experienced this where you're playing with the terrain tool in Unity and it just, your game looks so cheap, right? There's a principle with 3D game development that I think you should understand. It's going to look cheap when you just lay down the core. So whether it's using Pro Builder um, to lay out an interior level or just your terrain. All you're doing is laying out the basic sort of canvas, and then you're gonna start laying stuff all over that canvas. So it's always gonna look cheap, and it's always gonna look silly just starting out, okay? What really makes a level pop is when you start placing assets onto the level, okay? So this is what we've got here. Now, just a few textures that we're utilizing, and these were purchased from the asset store. Again, I understand that a lot of you don't have $100 to spend on textures, but when you do have $100 to spend on textures, it makes things so much easier, okay? It's gonna, it's gonna speed up the process for you because I don't have to design all these textures. I can edit the textures, okay? So for example, if we open up these, our texture palette here, you can see we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 textures. These are all Photoshop documents, okay? So if I just double click on this texture here, it'll open up Photoshop. This is really cool. It'll open up Photoshop and then I can just change the coloring to my liking and call it a day, right? If I wanted to make this grass, I don't know, yellow or something, I could change it to yellow really, really quickly here. Where's yellow? Like an ugly yellow like that. I could change it, save it, and Unity will update it on the fly, right? And now it's just the worst looking level on the planet. But you get the point. 
and we're going to be creating some textures in just a minute after I sort of explain how this level is put together. All right. So ultimately, we've got a very simple terrain. We've got a very simple um, set of textures, just a few textures. Okay. And we've got rocks. And then we also have these trees. All right. And these trees are again from an asset pack okay we've just tweaked the colors of the trees but overall just a very simple um, set of assets and terrain okay now the next question is how are the sound effects playing when the player is running across various textures right so basically the way we're going to do this let me show it to you. Let's hit play first, okay? Let's listen here. I'm gonna turn up the sound for you guys. There's wooden footsteps here. Now we have sand. It makes a big difference. It makes a, a big difference when you have footstep sounds. And then it goes to stone. And then in here, oh wow, it's a much grassier sound. It's like bushes. And then the stone. Okay, how is that being determined, right? I'd love to have you guys guess in the chat. How do you think that's being determined? We've got two different things, right? We've got terrain textures, right? And they're informing us what the sounds should be. But then we also have sometimes when you rock on a walk rock walk on a rock like a prefab here, it'll play a sound. Is it based on a texture? What is it? Is it based on the prefab? It's actually based on two things. Okay. And once once we finish up talking about this, I'm going to jump into this scene and start making some changes real time so you guys can see how this level is being made. All right. And by the way, those of you just joining us, just remember there is a webinar. You can see it right below that teaches you how to make six figures. That's $100,000 just using a demo. So click below to check that out. It's totally free. There's also a 2D game kit and a 3D course totally free for you below. I'd love to see you on the programs and at the webinar. So be sure to check it out. Okay, so how are we doing this? Well, it's actually in a scriptable object called a sound manager. Now, I don't know the precise term for or definition for what a scriptable object is. All I know is it basically the way I like to think of I think of things in layman terms. I think of it as it's just an object that's stored in your project, not the scene, and you can access that object from the scene. <laughs> so you can have like, I don't know, a dictionary of sounds, for example. So in this case, <laughs> let me shrink my little mug here. In this case, we have our ground slash terrain sound groupings. Pretty cool, huh? So we've got carpet, we've got marble, wood grass, stone, dirt. And what we have is a texture that's linked to various sound effects. Okay. So the best one to look at would be this, um, this grass here. So we have grass dirt and we have grass. So two types of grass, both of those will just access these random sounds here. So it'll, it'll pick a random sound based on the texture. And so the cool thing about terrain is, I can send a raycast down, find the texture, and Unity will then link that texture to a sound and play a sound. But you also see we have a field here called tag, right? And what that means is I can tag these rocks, and if something is tagged as stone, it'll also, again, go back to the sound manager. It will look up where the tag is and then it'll play the sound based on that tag. So that's how we're managing all these sound effects for these assets, the, the stones, and also the terrain. So it's not necessarily simple in its construction, but the materials are very simple. And that's something to keep in mind, okay? It's usually the construction that takes a while, not the assets, especially with a 3D game. A 3D game should, you honestly, like this is just my opinion, you should utilize assets as often as possible and speed things up. 
But using those assets and constructing a beautiful, let's say, Lego mansion is a good metaphor. You can't have a beautiful Lego mansion without actually knowing how to use the Legos, right? And make a beautiful looking mansion. I don't know, something like that. <coughs> this is a decent metaphor, I guess. And it takes a while, and Felipe's done an incredible job putting this together. Now, something that I wanna do, let's move forward here. Something that I wanna do here is I want to create some, let's see here, if I press F here, we won't get that clipping. There we go. I want to create sort of a cobblestone pathway. And you can see here, Felipe's done an incredible job of sort of digging the path down here. Let's wait for it to load up here. He sort of dug down in the terrain just ever so slightly to create a cool little path here. But <clears throat> I think we could create a lot more of an effect here by creating some cobblestone, okay? So what I'm gonna do is actually utilize this as a terrain texture, okay? So this is a mesh, right? This is an actual 3D object, but I can also paint it this texture and its normal map. I love the normal map. Look, makes it look really good. And we could just start painting that around here, okay? So let's do that first today in our live stream. I want to make sure that I add this texture. So let's go ahead and find out what that texture is. It's called material stone tile and the texture itself is called stone tile, okay? So all we gotta do is when we're adding a new terrain layer, and this is gonna incorporate everything we just talked about, okay? So I'm gonna type in stone tile, there it is. So that's our albedo, okay? Now the problem is it's called new layer. We don't want that, okay? It's right here. I like to keep things organized ASAP because if I don't keep it organized now, I'll forget. So we're gonna call this stone tile, same exact name. And I'm gonna drag it into our terrain folder, into our layers, okay? Just so there's no doubt about where we're storing these. Because Unity, frankly, is, the terrain tool is a bit messy and it'll just randomly throw your layers all over your project folder, and then it gets really confusing where things are stored. Okay, so there we go. So if I paint this stone tile, we could paint it into the ground. Now I'll be honest, this happens a lot. After seeing it, it's just not my favorite. I don't think it looks realistic. I honestly don't really like it, okay? so. At least you know how it works, right? So what I wanna do is find a cobblestone texture, okay? Looks like we have one right here. We could probably utilize that. Um, so I'm actually going to go to this layer here and I'm gonna swap this texture out with this one here, okay? It's actually called, let's see here, ornamented stone wall. Hey, that looks great. That looks great. So I think we're gonna use that one. Um, I, you know what we could do is duplicate this entire folder. So control D. And now we're gonna call this paver path. That's just, I think a decent name. So paver path, all right? And we're just gonna call this paver path albedo. And then we're gonna call this one. All we wanna use is the normal map, okay? So we're gonna delete this. The materials, I don't even know if we need, it's a weird place to put it but that's fine. We're gonna call this paver path normal. And I think I'm gonna move this materials, <coughs> the material into a universal folder. Yeah, let's, let's actually just move these. We don't even need the material, okay? We're just gonna drag these into our terrains. There we go. Now we can delete that folder actually. So now we have that paver path, all right? And we have that stone tile texture here, or, or uh, what am I saying, uh, layer. So if we go to our terrain, and again, it's super important. It's super important to make sure you're naming everything as precisely as possible and the most obvious name so that you can search for it later. Believe me, because you end up, you end up getting so confused in the long run. Um, so you want to make sure everything is super clean. So I'm going to call this 
paver path. And I'm going to drag in that new texture. Okay. So I could just drag it in. There it is, albedo. Let's go ahead and drag in the normal map as well. Good. Okay. And I think we should be able to just paint it now. Yes, that looks a lot better. Good. So that looks a lot more like a path. The other one didn't look as much like a path. So that's like a paver path. Pretty cool. We have a patio in the back of our house that looks a lot like this. And so I think this is great. And the beauty of creating an additional texture, we duplicated that texture. The beauty in doing that is we can edit this texture to look a little bit more like it's maybe covered in dirt or make it darker, right? So I'm just gonna do this. It looks like an overgrown pathway, right? All right, so let's go over here back to um, where the player is so that we can sort of test this out, okay? Um, we could probably maybe, no, it doesn't look good there because I, I don't, I don't know. I feel like this should be a little bit more rock like that, see? Yeah, there we go, yep. So one of the beauties, this is something I learned sort of the hard way with terrain is that you really have to be strategic and very precise with how you're painting things. Um, your, your level can look really stupid really fast if you're not trying to blend in, let's say, these rocks here. So for example, what you would do is take our stone here and then blend it in. <clears throat> That's actually sand here, hold on. There's, there's our rock wall. So we take our stone here and you can blend it a little bit, see that? And so it makes it sort of justify the prefabs in this ground. So blending textures into prefabs is a huge asset that a lot of game developers don't take advantage of with the terrain tool. You can actually make things look really intentional and really beautiful just by blending the textures, okay? So let's just do a faint blend there, nothing crazy. And then we'll do that, uh, yeah, that thick grass here. I do want that to be right here, just so you can hear it when you're walking on it. And by the way, that thick grass sound when you're running through the grass, it's not detecting like that <laughs> sound when you're running through this. It's not looking for the brush, right? It's actually looking for the, this grass texture below it. So wherever we have these tall grasses, we just put that texture below it. And it actually blends really nice too, so. Okay, back to the pathing, back to the pathing. So let's see how this looks here. I'm gonna do something like this. It's a little, I wanna do this very subtle here. And just sort of blend. Let's see here, maybe we'll do one around it. Yeah, I think we should make it bigger. So maybe four by four. Yeah, that looks a lot better. It looks a lot better. Okay, good, good, good. So you can just change the tile there, the tiling, and it looks pretty good. Okay, let's turn off the lighting here so we can see a little bit better. And I'm just doing very subtle pavers here, okay? All right, let's hit play. Um, I know for certain though, we need to do this really quick. Remember, we need to go to the sound manager and add in this texture, okay? So, yes, let's go to our the layer itself is called paver. So we're gonna call this paver, um, paver path. And I'm gonna add in that texture. And then we have sounds here. I'm gonna do a stone sound. So we have step stone. There it is, one, two, three, four and five. <clears throat> so that should, the theory is that should, <laughs> should work. So we will take a look here. Um, yep, it should work. So let's take a look.
so it looks like it's not working. Unsurprising because we had this issue last week. Something is wrong. Something is wrong with the uh, game, uh, sound manager. It's really interesting. I can't figure it out. I cannot figure it out for the life of me. Um, we're going to have to figure this out. Let's go. So let's open up game manager here, or the sound manager. Take a look. Grass thick works. Paper path works. That's what it's called. Paper path, paper path. Interesting. Let's go to our terrain here and see what the name of the paper path. Yeah, guys, I don't know. I don't know. Interesting. Does it need a space in it? Yeah, we'll have to figure it out. Yep, don't know. Man. Grass thick, grass thick. Did I do the wrong one? I don't know, guys. I think we need to rename this to Paper Path. That's it, yep. That's what it is. No, we're not tagging, we're not tagging the terrain. We're using uh, names of textures. So this, that should do it. We can't have the word albedo in it. It's something stupid with the code. I need to fix the code. It's my fault. There we go. Very good. So I definitely like the way this looks here. And this is, this comes back to being really precise with how we're doing our textures. I like that, right? but I don't like it over here where it doesn't dip into the ground. It just doesn't look natural. So that, I don't really like that. So, it looks like the paper path is something we wanna use sparingly, all right? So I'm gonna to go to our terrain here and we're just gonna put some dirt here. Just go back over it, no big deal. But I did like the way <coughs> Excuse me. I did like the way it looked here. Very simple. Very beautiful, right? Um, okay. Any other pathing we can do? Hmm. No, I think we're good there. Maybe let's add some up here. So right about this area here. Make it look a little bit more intentional. And when I say intentional, I mean it looks lived in, right? We want it to look lived in. So just very subtle. And d should you paint your texture on the terrain uh, while you're raising and lowering the, the terrain, or should you do it as a final sort of cherry on top? Does anybody know? Should you do it while you're raising your terrain and lowering your terrain and molding your terrain, or should you do it after you're done and you're sure? <clears throat> Anybody know the answer? There we go. Keep on keeping on here. Looking good. <clears throat> we could even probably put some here. Right? Just to make it look intentionally sort of blending up into the stairs here. Look at the cool. Very good. It's a little bit dense there. So we'll do a little bit of this, a little bit of dirt here. There we go. Just a little too dense for me. <clears throat> there we go. And I want it to blend a little bit into the dirt, okay? So I just want it to be very subtle. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna open this up in Photoshop again one of the be benefits of having it as a Photoshop file is that we can go ahead and just add a hue saturation layer over top of it, make it a little bit darker, right? Save it, go back to Unity, and now it blends a little bit better, see that? So that's why I really like having all of my images as Photoshop documents. Yes, it makes the project file bigger, but it won't make your build bigger. It will make the project bigger but not your build. Hey, that looks really good. We could probably make the normal map not so ins insane, so like 0.5 is fine, and that looks really good, okay? Same is true down here. 
probably add a little bit more in here. And I know <coughs> that we probably want to do a little bit more intensity here. Yeah, that looks really good. I love that. Okay. Good, 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 good. And then over here, remember we had too much here. So we're just gonna just dab some sand on here. And that is what we want. Very cool. Okay. I like it a lot, guys. Very, very good. Okay. Now, the next thing I wanted to do during this live stream is I wanted to add in a lever system. Okay. So a lever that will open up this gate. Where am I? Over here. Okay. So I actually want this gate down. All right. So we have a gate and lever system ready to go. I think it's called drop gate. Hmm. We might have to make a new one. Drop gate small. What is this? Fence iron. Okay. This is gonna do, this is gonna work for us. So if I rotate this like this, this is all built and ready to go, okay? It looks like these are scaled up to put 2.5, so we can actually just utilize these. So 2.5, 2.5, 2.5. Okay, good. So now we have drop gates, and these are programmed and ready to go. Okay, so I'm going to delete these. And then this, where'd it go? Where'd you go? There you are. We're going to take these here, put them right here. And the theory is it should be down like this big old gate that you can't get through and then it opens up like that okay when we uh, when we uh, press the lever okay so I'm just gonna put that there for now we're gonna do two of them but I'm just gonna do one for now and we're also gonna do a lever okay so we have a lever ready to go and this is one of those things what that I wanted to talk about during this live stream is you want to make sure you have your 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 game objects ready to go, ready to, to just throw into your game. So this is the graphic, right? This is the Blender graphic. But this is the lever, and it just works. It's ready to go, OK? So for now, I'm just going to put it right at the dock, just so I know it's working properly. So there's our lever. And we also have this drop gate. So what I do is I drag in the new drop gate right there. Good and also the gate camera we're going to take this camera and i'm going to fly all the way over here and i'm going to position it right here see how i've selected the gate camera here i'm going to press Control f and it's going to show the gate opening up okay i could probably put it right about here Control Control shift f positions objects okay so i could do it like right here let's get a better position Hmm. That's kind of pretty. We'll do that. Okay. I don't know why that camera's not rendering. It's not rendering this properly. I wonder why. Isn't that interesting? I don't know why. Hmm. We'll 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 test it out, okay? So the theory is we go to the lever, we press it, it tells this gate camera here to activate and this gate will open up. So let's press play on this gate here. So if we go to the animator and press play, this is what happens. Okay. It goes pretty high. Now this one is just the opening. So it's pretty, it goes pretty tall. Um, so that's a problem. I wonder how we fix that. I think I know what we need to do. Yeah, I think I've got it. What we want to do is make it one by one by one. Hit play here. You can see it goes pretty high. Yep, yep. So then what we want to do is the graphic itself, we can scale up to 2.5. 
Uh, there we go, there we go, there we go. And then we can have two of those. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so one, I'm gonna copy that, paste it, and then two, just like that. Yeah, we're good. And then again, we just need to position those properly. So the two of them are nice and centered here, just like that. And now they will go up and animate like, wait, 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 wait. I see, I see. We're gonna unpack this prefab. There we go. And I can put that inside of there. There we go. Now it should animate both of those as one. There we go. Okay. The position changes too, which is okay. Um, so what we wanna do here is in this case, uh, it looks like the position is at zero. So what we wanna do is position this at zero. Uh, wait, 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 wait. Zero, 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 right. Good, okay. So this is zero, zero, zero. There we go. And then these two, we position over like this. And now it's gonna be a nice clean open. Just like that. Okay, so that should do it. I'm gonna save the scene here. We're gonna hit play. Hopefully, hopefully this works, okay? You guys ready? Let's hit play. So the animation will move the collider, yes. Okay, ready? There we go, good. Okay, so the reason this is, by the way, the reason why this is um, not working, I believe, is the occlusion culling. I think we need to clear it out. I think. Now if we go to the gate camera here, yep, it works now. So let's try that one more time. Good, okay, it works. And then you can close it too if you want. Um, awesome, that works great. Okay, I didn't think it was gonna be that easy, but we're ready to go with that. So what I wanna do is take this, <coughs> excuse me, take this here, and all I gotta do is put it somewhere where you could pull the lever, okay? So I think right there actually would be really cool. Put it right there, right? But the only way to get inside of this is we need some sort of, sort of like wooden barrier that you have to break through with the ax, so we'll put some wooden planks right there. I think that would be totally fine. Okay, or we could even put one here. Yeah, that makes sense. Ah, good. Felipe did that. Thank you, Felipe, that makes sense. Smart move. Okay, so the only way to get in here is to have the wooden ax, which is way over here on this island here, so you have to go over here, get it, and then you can come back, break through, come to the cemetery, and then pull the lever. Okay, very simple, basic gameplay design here. There we go. Position it right about here. All right. So the player just has to pull this lever on this brick. That's about it. It's nice and centered, I like that. We could probably make it look a little bit prettier, so maybe do like this. Maybe two of these here. Mm. Put one here as well. All right. Maybe position this over just a little bit more. It's a little little too vibrant for, for me. Um, maybe move that up just a little bit. Okay, that means that this key is now irrelevant. So we're gonna delete this key and instead we're just gonna put a cash bag, pick up cash bag in here. So it's just cash that you can get, okay? All right, <clears throat> so that works great. Let's center you up just a little bit here, buddy. Okay, good, good, good. And then remember, we got that gate got moved because it's a child, or that gate camera got moved because it's a child, so we're just gonna bring it right back here and do Control F. And now we're good to go. See you guys? Um, pretty straightforward. So that's gonna work just fine for us. So basically what you have to do 
is grab this ax, run all the way down here, break through here, come over here, pull the lever, and then the gate will open up, and then you go to the second part of the level, okay? All while plenty of story is happening, okay? Let's fix this little rock here, okay? Beautiful. Pull it up just a tad there. All right. Save it out. And that's that's how we're making the exterior level here, guys. And one final cherry on top, a little bonus here, is just remember that the reason this looks as pretty as it does is because of our effects, okay? The effects are the fog. Okay, so this is what it looks like without fog, right? So if I hit play here, this is what it looks like without fog. It's kind of devastating how bad it looks without fog. But when you turn it on, look how much moodier it looks. And that's no small thing. The real world has fog even on a clear crisp day there's still atmosphere and things still blend into the background okay so that's really what makes things look so beautiful lighting and fog is what makes things look realistic and beautiful and have that beautiful gradation next is the post-processing okay so without the post-processing this is what it looks like okay but with the post-processing we have this glowy look, right? Glowy fire. The color is shifting a little bit. We've dropped the mid-tones down to the greener areas, or the, the shadows down. You can see that wheel on the left side here, the, the wheel to the left. We've pulled the shadows down towards the green, and then we've brought the highlights and mid-tones warmer, so we're creating contrast with color there. <laughs> Yes, this is URP. This is URP, yes. All right, so let's take a look at our little work, our progress here. We've got stone here. I'll probably remove that there, it's a little much. Flatten it out too. It just doesn't look good if it's not flat. <clears throat> we have our sound effects playing, looks great. We need to tag this bridge because the sound isn't playing properly. <coughs> nice jumping here. Nice, I like that. Grab our axe. Good. We'll climb our way down here. Very good, Felipe. Good job, buddy. We talked about that this morning, trying to get that to be more of a stair step. That looks great. Go up here. Break that, I'll need to put a particle effect there. And now we can make our way through here. And here is our lever. We can open the gate. Isn't that great? So we have two different sort of, I don't know, door and lock systems. We have the lever and then we also have a key, all right? That's basically it, guys. Very, very cool. And by the way, if you haven't checked out my 3D course, it's called Easy 3D. It's gonna teach you how to do terrain like this and use assets. If you haven't checked that out, click the link below. It's totally free, no gimmicks. You just click below, enter your email, and boom, you're in the course. And uh, you can take it at your own speed. Also, there's a free 2D game kit, the same game kit I made for uh, the PewDiePie game that I made. I made a game for PewDiePie in 14 days. That's below, totally free. And then also a webinar below on how to secure $100,000 with just a demo. I've done it multiple times, so I teach you how to do it. Click below, all of those are free. So whatever you want, those are below. They're gonna help you guys out and hopefully help you on your game dev journey. Well guys, this was super duper fun. I am going to go downstairs and hang out with my children and my wife. I will talk to you guys later. Cheers. Get over here. Get down. <coughs> hey, 
Thanks for watching. By the way, if you haven't downloaded that free 2D game kit below, click below, it's my treat to you. I used this game kit to make a game for PewDiePie in 14 days and I actually got to play it with him in front of his audience, which was really cool. This game kit is totally free. It's my treat to you and you can use it however you want. You can make a commercial game and make a million bucks off this game kit. I don't care. Or you could just use it for a hobby project. It's my treat to you. And by the way, if you haven't clicked like, that would mean a ton to me. Hit subscribe. And also, this is important. Hit that notification bell. Here's why. If you get notified of when I'm live, you can watch me make my next game and let me know in the chat what you think about the game or any ideas you have. And you might just show up, your chat might just show up in the next video that I upload. All right, I'll talk to you later, bye.